Hey folks, Mac D here, Mac D Garage. And uh, this is the start of about a three part video. This is gonna be about day one, the delivery, and everything that I did with this Smart for Two right here behind me prior to giving it to my wife. So let's go ahead and see the delivery and what I did the first day that I had it. Because hey, used cars always require a little TLC. So let's get the first day out of the way. Yep, folks, this is it. It's here. Finally. <clears throat> He's just getting the ramps to unload it and he'll drive it off and then park it. And then we'll take care of paperwork or whatever. Then we'll get working on it. There we go. All good. There we go, folks. I'm going to touch this up a little bit rusty, so I'm hitting it up with this uh, brush. Clean up this smart for two. Uh, we're changing the wheels because they put the front wheels on the back and they put the back wheel on the front. Because believe it or not, the tire is wider slightly for the rear. And it's narrower for the front. So, uh, what size is it? It is a 155-60R15. And this one that's supposed to go on the back is, what again? Is a 175-55R15. So, yeah, we want to put the bigger tire on the back because that's where the traction happens. So, that's what we're doing. Well, folks, one thing you want to know is the front tires take 29 PSI and the rear tires take 36 PSI. And look at the sizes. You can definitely tell the si tire sizes. So, if you own one of these, make sure whoever you're doing when you rotate them, you can only rotate them left to right. You can't go front to back and all that other stuff. So, that's a sticker on this uh, Smart for Two. 29 PSI front, 36 PSI rear. I wonder if that affects how it handles because uh, we had the fronts on the back and the back on the front. So, driving was a little squirrely. So, I'm wondering how it's going to drive now with the tires in the correct position at the correct air pressure. Going to go ahead and hit this up a little bit so that we don't have a problem. Hard to do with one hand, folks, but you get the idea. Let me go ahead and get it cleaned up. And nice and clean, ready to go. Can't argue with that, can we? Oh, yeah, I hear those creaking bones. Oh, yeah, now we got to do the front. So, looks like this is a standard uh, rusty thing that we're doing. But hey, the brake pads are in excellent shape. So, a little cursory inspection. Not much to do with 6,000 miles on it. We'll go ahead and uh, hit up this rust and then we'll fluid film everything. There we go. 
a little rusty in there, but I'll spray a little fluid film in there. No harm, no foul. The surface is clean, and that's really what we wanted. Now I just got to do the other tire. All right. Now we got the uh, back wheel that was on the front all cleaned up. So everything's clean. While well, Jeff uh, does a quick check on the balancing on them, just to double check, because it's been nine, what, 14 years since they've been balanced? 15, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we might as well check the balance, because <laughs> these are 2009 tires, folks. But they're not weather checked. I am not seeing anything. So this thing was kept in a garage and wasn't stored outside. The tires are not cracked or checked. There we go. Getting the tires done, then we'll go eat. Then once I get a good run on it, we'll go ahead and see what this little yellow thing does. Not sure, it doesn't say anything on it. I don't know if you push it, pull it, twist it, whatever. We'll figure it out. It's gotta have something to do with oil, but we'll go ahead and get it figured out. Check a few other things and uh, do an oil change. And then we'll check some brake fluid. But we got to find the brake fluid reservoir first because it is obviously not here. Wonder where it would be. Well, we'll figure it out. All we have to do is keep removing plastic bits. And eventually we'll find something. All right. Now we have the tires correctly. We got the thinner tires up front and we got the wider tires on the back. We figure the dealer or somebody probably thought they'd rotate them and they didn't have a clue what they're doing. So anyway, if you ever wanted to know, two different size tires, wider tires for the back, narrower tires for the front, but everything's cleaned up, balanced. All the tires are balanced, so it's time to go out and give it a good little test run and get this oil stirred up because this thing has been sitting around more than it's been driven. So time to heat up everything and give it a nice little test run in a thunderstorm no less. First we're going to check the lights to make sure they work. Well as you look, uh, I got the brake fluid. Original 2009 brake fluid. Check that out folks. Ain't that terribly bad for being uh what? 14 years old <laughs> so that's another another project for another day it will bleed the brakes but for right now that does look decent for the age coolant level is exactly where it's supposed to be blue and i do add a little windshield washer fluid to it but it comes off right here little thumbs you just move those and they pop out and this whole thing comes off so that's all there is to it right here not much. Radiator's right down here. Right there's a radiator all the way up front here. So, yeah, there's some stuff to do to it yet, but I'm not going to get too far onto it. But that's how it hangs off with the strap. But we're going to go ahead and get the oil changed because that is one thing I always want to do. And then maybe eventually I'll do a coolant flush and a brake fluid change out. But right now, we're more interested in getting this thing presentable for uh, the missus because uh, yeah, 25 years of uh, being hooked up with her and also her birthday. So, hey, it's a combination present for her. Now one other thing that we did that we did not account for <laughs> is when you move the front tires and the back tires back around to where they gotta be, uh, one would think, well, TPMS sensors. I wonder if they're gonna behave themselves. And Jeff, did the TPMS sensors behave themselves? Never. No, they didn't. So we got the Autel hooked up to it, and we're going to see if we can't program these things to back to where they got to be. Otherwise, I'm sure there's a gas pedal, turn your keys on, blink twice, you know, hold your breath for 10 seconds, and then hit the brake or something type situation where we can train them. But for now, I'm going to work on getting the oil changed and uh, get it ready for that for my wife to drive so let's get that oil changed setting the uh, wheel pressures we're doing the right rear wheel we've done the left front and right front now we're doing the right rear and it should tell us that it's done it 
Here we go. Anytime now. Not yet. Come on. I know it's going to. There we go. All right. Now we do the left rear wheel. And that will be done. It'll be the same procedure for that one. And that will complete the test. And now we just wait for the left rear to reduce 4 PSI and register. And then that will be all four wheels. And we should be able to tell what was going on with it then. Come on. Any day now. There we go. Hit OK. Establishing vehicle communication. And we should be done, I would think. Adaptation is successfully completed. Carry out the test drive for a minimum of 15 minutes at speed over 30 miles per hour or 19 miles per hour. Read the trouble code once again. Okay. Well, we're not going to test drive it right away. So we're going to say it's all good. If it comes back, we'll go through the whole process again, I guess. But now we got to put air pressure back in the tires, maybe. Wow, folks, look at that screen. That bolt. Just to give you an idea how big it is. <laughs> it's 24 millimeter head on that thing. Holy cow. Small car, big head. Anyway, that screen is part of the whole thing. I don't know what the screen does specifically, but hey, it's on there. And we're draining the oil efficiently out. It doesn't look too bad, the oil didn't, but then again, uh, muffler hot, folks, by the way. Hot muffler, just burned myself. Anyway, we're gonna let that dream empty. And then somebody put a Mobile One oil filter on this bad boy. We're gonna replace that Mobile One with a uh, Pure Later One. So, yep, you know me and Pure Later. That's how I roll. Anyway, uh, it is a Mobile One filter, so whoever's doing oil changes, more than likely, if it's a Mobile One filter, what do you think that oil is? Well, you want to guess, Jeff? Would they put Mobile One in an engine that has Mobile One on the sticker that says use Mobile One, and then they got a Mobile One oil filter? Huh. Somebody took care of this car. At least spent money on it, even though they didn't drive it. But anyway, we'll get the oil changed. I'm not going to do oil test this time because, nah, I'll wait till I get some good registered miles on it with my wife, and then we'll know what it is. Alrighty, got the old oil done. That's right, it's full, three and a half or so quarts. Oil filter, pure later one, and that's a cap back in place. No leaks underneath, ran it, checked it, and it's all good. So now it's time for me to start cleaning this car in preparation for giving it to my wife on Sunday. So I gotta get some washing and waxing done. Only for my wife do I wash cars. You guys know me. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and probably hit this up in the morning. Wash it, dry it, wax it, do the back to black, shine the tires, clean the glass, vacuum it inside, and then I'll head home and bring her back up and give it to her. Well, folks, that's the first day on this Smart for Two when it was delivered. Remember, like, subscribe, join, all that good stuff. My feet hit the floor today, and I'm having a great day. I want you to have a great day, too. And uh, Band of One's got some great music along with Mercy Girl and her one-liners. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production. <laughs>